This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Miss Music Teacher, Carver Tate, courtesy of Matt, Lauren Lang, courtesy of Matt. Thank you, Matt. And thanks for the year-end bonus, Kevin. Plus, everybody welcome new patron, Michael. Welcome. On this episode of DTNS, Apple gave in and will support RCS and gave MagSafe to Android. What's going on here? Is it the spirit of the holidays? Why? Yes, it is. Will Smith is here with some early geek gift ideas to celebrate. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, November 16th, 2023. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Artichoke Card, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Joining us, the co-host of Brad and Will made a tech pod, not the Brad, but the Will in that sentence. Will Smith, welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. And thanks for bringing gifts, ideas. Just ideas. It's not, I'm not Oprah over here. You know, it's, <laughs> not, it's not like, hey, yeah. check under your seat, guys. <laughs> oh, did you not get everybody in the audience these gifts that you're about to I'm, tell us about? I'm so oh, sorry. Man, you get an OLED Steam Deck and you can. Uh, Instagram announced more than 25 new city themed filters. Uh, why is the Tokyo one only black and white? I don't know. But the company's testing sticker creation from users, photos, and videos as well. Let's start with the rest of the quick hits. Microsoft made a bunch of announcements yesterday and also announced a new Windows app for Microsoft business accounts, at least for now, for accessing its operating system on iPhones, iPads, Macs, Windows PCs, and web browsers, but no Android support just yet. The app is a modified Windows 365 app which streams a copy of Windows from a remote PC, Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Microsoft DevBox, and Microsoft Remote Desktop Services all uh, are part of the deal. Microsoft looks to be moving Windows fully to the cloud on the consumer side. I mean, it's just a remote viewer app under a fancy name, but Windows in the iOS app store, like that's just... Wow. And it's That's just called the thing. Windows app. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brave new world. A new report from the Pew Research Center found that 30% of U.S. adults say they regularly get news from Facebook, with YouTube in close second at 26%, and 14% say they get news from TikTok. That number is the one to pay attention to because it is on the rise. It is the number four slot just behind Instagram. And 43% of people who use TikTok say they regularly get news from there. That's a big jump from 22% in 2020. Fifth place is X, formerly Twitter. Uh, more than 50% of X users say they regularly get news on that platform, although only 70% of U.S. adults say they knew Twitter had been renamed to X. Well, Meta's social network Threads is now testing tagged topics on the platform to help categorize posts by interest or theme. This is how the hashtag currently works pretty much all over the internet. But Threads isn't including the the pound sign, the hashtag sign, when it's used on Threads itself. Clickable links will be shown instead. The tagging feature is having a limited test in Australia with more countries able to test soon, says the company. A couple of music items here for you. Uh, Apple Music Classical launched eight months ago as part of the standard Apple Music subscription, but you couldn't get it on the iPad until now. Classical version 1.1 rolling out to the App Store with a new design optimized for that larger iPad display, navigation sidebar, and a now playing media controls toolbar. In other musical news, Google DeepMind explained how audio created using its AI Lyria model, like tracks made with YouTube's new audio generation features, will be watermarked with synth ID so that AI generated origins can be tracked after they're created. DeepMind also said human ears won't hear anything noticeable because of the watermark and it should not compromise the listening experience. NVIDIA has an update for its GeForce Now app that offers game syncing with the Microsoft Store, PC Game Pass, and Ubisoft Plus. This lets NVIDIA's cloud gaming service users stream PC games purchased off the Microsoft Store on GeForce Now. The update will also integrate any linked PC Game Pass and Ubisoft Plus accounts with the GeForce app. I think that's good. Good for GeForce. Getting, uh, we're, we're getting a little cloud parody in there. And Microsoft wants to look all... Like, we're not anti-competitive. Look, 
when hooking into all the things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of not looking anti-competitive, Apple announced <laughs> Thursday it will adopt RCS. RCS is the Rich Communication Service Messaging Standard. It is the successor to SMS. And if you've heard me go off on this uh, on DTNS before, I apologize. I may go off on it again, but it's a standard. Carriers use it. Google uses it. Everybody but Apple had been using it. The company says the feature will be part of a software update later next year. <laughs> so it's not coming anytime soon, uh, but we'll offer more interoperability options between iPhone and Android users because they'll both not just be using SMS, but also RCS. Apple clarified in a statement to 9to5Mac, this will work alongside iMessage, which will continue to be the best and most secure messaging experience for Apple users. But that's true of SMS. SMS works alongside iMessage. Uh, RCS allows uh, things like read receipts, typing indicators, high-quality images and videos, and real-time location data. And it means those videos won't get all squished when you send them between people who are on different platforms. Yeah, no, Apple is is careful to say, now, remember, iMessage is end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, RCS doesn't currently support our iMessage level encryption. And, you know, Apple has historically resisted pressure from anybody who wanted the company to adopt RCS. For the most part, just kind of being like, well, then buy your mom an iPhone if she wants it, you know, so badly, you know, if there's a green bubble problem, <laughs> which is something that Tim Cook actually said. Like he actually now, said that. Yeah, it now, uh, the company now says it will work with mobile industry trade group GSMA to further improve the RCS protocol. Will, uh, heck may have frozen over here. Uh, are you surprised by this? It was, it was kind, kind, of, kind, of, kind of an interesting move this morning. Yeah, this kind of came out of the blue, right? I like yeah. the, the the word has been we're not going to support RCS forever since RCS became a, a thing on other platforms, and now the, the you know I don't know if there's pressure from the EU or or concerns about threats of you know congressional hearings about all the SMS spam you're getting or maybe uh, Tim's you know sister-in-law or something got a, an Android phone and he's tired of getting little tiny videos, but uh, here we are. It's a good thing for like I don't see any downside to this. This seems like a really wonderful move. I feel like on the Apple's third part. one is the most likely to drive Apple to do this. Is he finally got on a group chat with someone on Android? It was like ah oh, these tiny low res videos. Fine, fine. Let's do our Yeah, CS. let's but fix it. Hmm. But you're probably yeah. right. It's probably the pressure of investigations in the U.S. and the EU as well. Um, what, what, whatever the reason, I think it is a little bit annoying that Apple is saying they won't support encryption on this or they're being vague about it. They're saying they won't support iMessage level end-to-end -end encryption. At Google supports end-to-end -end encryption on group chats and individual messages on RCS. They have since August. So you can implement it. It You don't have to. You can support RCS without it, which is what Apple is making it sound like they're going to do. But that would be my last request to Apple. Since they so kindly agreed to my previous request and are now supporting RCS, just support it and then encrypt it as well. Sure, it won't be as, as lock tight as iMessage, but it'll be good. N not supporting encryption doesn't really back up there. Yo, we're the privacy carry, right. the privacy handset particularly well. So... We'll and it is it is difficult. I will give you that. Google took a while to implement it. And when they first implemented it, they only implemented it on one-to-one -one chats. Uh, they had to do extra work to make it work on group chats. But I think it's worth I think it's worth the work. I mean, I don't have to do the work, so that's easy for me to say, I guess. Yeah, as somebody who also doesn't have to go through the work, I'm I'm two thumbs up over here. I think it's a good move on their part. Yeah. Peace in our time, though. I that did not have the. I would have maybe put this on my predictions show at the end of the year as like my wild prediction that Apple will support RCS. And it <laughs> well, and that kind of, it, and your and timeline it. probably would have been you know correct because this might not happen until the end of 2024. That's right, later you know, next year. So. Later next year means maybe yeah, like maybe like Christmas. Uh, my, I think of that. That implies that they are just now starting to do the work to implement it, that they had not been working on it, which is what they said. They said they weren't working on it. My, my bet would be that this is a next major release of iOS, not one of the point releases for what iOS 17 or whatever we're on now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So this no, is that, September probably. It feels might like not me. even be the first release in September. It might even be later. But but yeah, you're right. I think well, it, that's the earliest we get it. And it'll probably roll out carrier by carrier. 
uh, as well, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because that's how you have this to works. Do, you have to do yeah. some carrier implementation as well. Though carriers all implement it with Google. So that because they've done that work, that could make it easier. That starts to get out of my realm of awareness there. But um, anyway, all, all a good thing. And this also is a good thing. Qi2, spelled Q-I with a number two, is the next version of the wireless charging standard that incorporates magnet charging. And if you're saying, oh, so that it's like MagSafe, it is in fact MagSafe. Apple contributed its MagSafe power profile, the magnetic power profile from MagSafe to the standard. So you'll be able to buy a Qi2 charger and use it with either an Apple MagSafe device or an Android device that supports Qi2 magnetic tech. Uh, or you can buy a case for either one if it has Qi2 magnetic in it as well, because Qi2 will also charge Qi1 compatible devices. So even if they don't have the magnet, it'll still charge them. But if that magnet does a little lock thing where it sticks right to whatever you're sticking it to. The Wireless Power Consortium announced the first Qi version 2.0 devices are nearly through the certification process. That's the news today and will go on sale by the holidays. So you'll be able to buy some of these soon. Uh, more than 100 are either in the certification testing or about to go into certification testing. Uh, and supposedly the iPhone 15 lineup will be the first Qi2 certified phones. I wonder if that bring means all of the it on bring Yeah, it the on. MagSafe. Do you think that means the MagSafe uh, accessories will work with the Android phones then suddenly? You'll be able to snap an Apple wallet or like one of those yeah. rings on the back of your Android phone? Theoretically, at least the Qi wireless charging part of that would work. Now, there might be other things that don't work. There might be other aspects of it that make it fall off or something. I, I don't know about that. But but the, the, the wireless charging should work because this is the same magnetic power profile. Very cool. I, and I, I love this. This is one of my favorite things about the, the new iPhones. Uh, my wife has a, a magnetic mount for her iPhone in the Audi, uh, and you just slap it up there and it stays and it charges and you don't have to think about it. You don't have to press a thing like I do in my car and, and you know, fit it in and then hope it doesn't fall out. Uh, the downside has been, I can't use my pixel fold in that charger. I have to come up with another solution if I'm using that one. Uh, but not that I'll be able to use the Pixel Fold, but I can get a case for it maybe uh, and use it uh, with MagSafe now. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a level of, with the early pads where you just rested the device on the pad before the MagSafe stuff came online, it was a little hinky. Sometimes you'd get up in the morning, you'd grab your phone off, you'd look at it and you'd be like, oh, it didn't charge yeah. last night because I set it in the wrong place. And then then you have to have dead battery phone all day to deal with. So the the MagSafe, like it seems like a goofy thing. I thought it was a goofy thing until I started using it. And, and just that reassuring little click. Yeah. Well, that and the fact that it charges my AirPods and and my phone like has made my things I have to have chargers for on my nightstand much much more manageable now. It's basically just like one USB C cable and then a MagSafe thing and and the thing for my watch, they, which is which it, is yeah. a quality of life it's improvement. A, I'm like they really need to get the watch on Qi somehow. I understand that there's an engineering issue there, but it is the one outlier because even though it's wireless and it's magnetic, it's not Qi. It's different wireless, different magnetic. So. Stop it. No, I, I, I shouldn't be mad. This is good. This is very good. It was good See? that Apple contributed this. <laughs> this is why when you're someone like me who's only in the Apple ecosystem, you're like, oh, uh, well, no, it works for my watch and my AirPods because it's an Apple wireless pad. But it's not cheap. Oh. It's different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you, Apple, today, supporting RCS and Chi2. Look at Apple playing nicely on the playground with everybody. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> unlike you, sir, madam. Well, I, I, I mean, do you think they're getting paid on each of these sold? Is this a, is this a light? Did they announce the terms of the deal? Is this like a licensing deal where they get money oh, for every, every Chi2 device? They did. And I don't think they're, I, I, I think it's part of a patent pool. So there is a benefit to doing it. Uh, but I don't think it's a, a monetary benefit. I think okay. it's a, a an indemnity benefit. I'm going off of vague memory now, uh, but that is a very good question. 
Yeah, I mean that makes that makes a lot more sense if they were in danger of getting sued for for using technology that may may they may or may not have appropriate patents to use than trading in their bad their magnet stuff for the for the yeah uh, it makes it's, a lot of sense. It's being a good partner as part of the wireless power consortium. Like you get the benefits of patent indemnity from using Qi, so you're helping to improve the standard for yourself and everybody. Well, and and more of these pads is better for everyone, right? Yeah, not having yeah. not having a no That's data way key, to charge right? your phone is a wonderful thing to have in the world this encourages more people to make accessories that then work with the iphone that then means more people are comfortable using the iphone uh well folks that's the fast moving world of apple being nice if you want to stay up on the fast moving world of artificial intelligence you need to listen to ai named this show uh it launched during dtns experiment week back in august and it's going strong each week tristan jutra and Tasia custody wade through the hype and the doom saying to try to keep you informed about the latest news in the ai world you can catch it at ai named this show.com well, whether we're ready or not, we're getting into the holiday season, everybody. And that means that people are starting to think about what to get the geek in your life, that best gift, something that they hadn't seen before, or something that they've been longing for, something that is kind of a, you know, just like a like a fun outlier. Thankfully, Will, you've, you've done some heavy lifting here and you've got some ideas. So what are we starting with? I think we should start with the screwdriver set. This is the classic geek gift, but everybody mm. should have a good screwdriver set. And and the traditional recommendation is a thing with like 150 bits in it that it will let you open up every single device you you have in your house. This That's not what this <laughs> set is. This is your workday screwdrivers. These are the ones that you use in your PC. I think you can open a, a iPhones, iOS devices. Uh, you can open Nintendo devices because it has the trilobe. It has pentalobe. Uh, it has uh, uh, Torx bits, Phillips, and just standard flat screwdrivers. And it's a really, really usable small screwdriver, whether you're working on your eyeglasses or, or digging around inside your PC case. Uh, with magnetic tips too, which are incredibly handy. Is it I, individual screwdrivers for each bit or replaceable bits? So these like are individual. These are individual screwdrivers. It's like fifteen screwdrivers. Uh, each one has its own that. has a specific yeah. head. the The ones with the bits are great, but I often find that the the thing that holds the bits in places is too thick to fit mm -hmm. into the places you need to get the screwdriver head. So that's yeah. why I start with this one and then go to the other one if we want to have a, a more comprehensive set. All right, let's talk coffee. Uh, this this next one is the next level. Uh, so the first one was the iFixit uh, Marlin screwdriver set. I'm going to say name so people, audio listeners, know what we're talking about. Uh, the, the next one is the next level Pulsar Brewer, which is a new kind of coffee brewer. It's called a zero bypass coffee brewer. This one was designed uh, by an astrophysicist in, in collaboration with the next level folks. And they're called zero bypass because it's designed to not allow any water to go past the filter, past the coffee as it goes around the filter into the into the and drain into your cup so you end up with a um a more controlled brewing mechanism than you have with like a pour over or uh, uh something like that the neat thing about this is that they add a valve on the bottom so you you have this you have a round tube there's a cylinder you put the coffee in you can let it steep for as long as you want and then you can release the valve to let the coffee drain into your cup and you so you get kind of the best of both worlds of like a brewed coffee of a french press style brewed coffee mm, uh that's mm -hmm. a percolated coffee like a like a like a pour over um and it's i think the closest analog that you all might be familiar with is like at the aeropress upside down technique yeah, where you like that, doesn't yeah but but you can do a bigger cup so you can do five five eight hundred grams of coffee no problem whereas the aeropress caps out at like 250 i think well and i for anybody who's sort of like nah, i don't drink coffee this works for tea as well Work, works for tea you can do loose tea in it because there's a paper filter in the bottom uh -huh. so so you get a night whether you're doing coffee or tea you get a nice clean cup with no sediment um and and like it's new enough that people are just starting to kind of figure out exactly what how how like the best ways to use this there's 300 recipes for this online right now wow. i've been i mean it's an exaggeration there's probably 20 but every barista who's tried it has come up with something <laughs> different 20. and a different twist and and but at, at the end of the day you can use it just like you'd use a french press and there's just get a filtered filtered brew at the end that doesn't have all the sediment that comes in at the bottom of a typical wire mesh uh, french press um, all right. Well, let's talk about if you, for whatever reason, uh, need to get a little bit more light on uh, some small little factors of uh, tinker tinkering around within a PC. 
So this is my uh, classic, classic recommendation. If you're working a PC or walking your dog after dark, it's really nice to have a good headlamp. You put it on. Uh, this this one in particular is the as the Black Diamond Cosmo 350. You can get a, uh, a $20 version that's about the same as this. It just doesn't do the dim dimming or spotlight features. I, I think the $35 is a kind of sweet spot, especially for a, for a gift. Um, and it's fantastic because when you're looking in the PC, when you drop a screw in there or something, when you're working, trying to get the memory in the slot and it's all dark down there, you can put the light right where you're looking. Um, and and everybody who, who works in PCs should really have one of these. When I started putting them in my toolkits, made my life uh, dramatically better. Oh my gosh. I mean, what, uh, you know, precision stuff like what you're mentioning or walking the dog at night. Really nice not to have one hand that is holding a flashlight. If you hold yeah. the poop bag and the flashlight with the same hand, eventually there's going to be tragedy. And you don't have a lot of leeway here, people. Nope. Yes. Yes. Nope. I, I, I'm with you on this. A good headlamp is something I did not know I needed until a couple of years ago. And the one that I got is fine, but this one looks real nice. These the batteries last like 15, 20 hours. You you don't have have to think about it. When I go camping, it lasts the entire time I'm gone. Usually, it's they're they're highly recommended. All right, uh, let's talk power strips. Will uh, power strips uh, are not a one size fits all situation. So, what are your holiday picks? So I really love these Anker power strips. Uh, they have decent USB chargers built in. Typically, you see a power strip with a USB port, and it's like a 500 milliamp uh, port that won't charge a modern phone even. Uh, these come up to 60-watt versions. This particular one is the uh, 332, I think, which is like six 120-volt uh, six, uh, plugs and then three USB ports, two A's and a C. Uh, this is a 20-watt version, so it'll charge a phone. It'll also top up an iPad or, or your Steam deck or whatever you want to plug into it um but like i said if you want to charge your laptop you can get up to 60 watts and you don't have a bunch of wall warts hanging off of it so i put them i like i kind of run them underneath the sofa so they're available uh so there's usb cables for people who are sitting on the sofa and need to top off yeah the usb <laughs> outlet nice part is you. really cool yeah i like that Sarah, people are me in this case. So <laughs> I was about to be like, you're a nicer person than I am because I'd be like, oops, sorry, no charger. Gotta go. See ya. Yeah. Bye. No, no, Get no. Out of my house. I just I don't I don't want to have to put my phone down while I'm watching TV. What, 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 what do I do? It's I'd have to pay attention to whatever's on the television. That's horrible. Mm, indeed, indeed. Okay, so this uh, this next uh, this next pick of yours is actually something that I I bought just in the last couple of months, and I'm quite blown away by. That's the AirPods Pro too. So what do you like about them? Yeah, I, I've been using uh, AirPods uh, the the Pros specifically for a couple of years now, and I upgraded my ones to twos last year when I was when I when I crushed one. Um, the the what, the thing that blows me away about the new one is this new feature that's coming with the last version of iOS adds an adaptive transparency mode. So it used to be you could do noise canceling or you could do transparency, and the transparency mode is 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 kind of impressive. The noise canceling is great. The transparency mode is impressive because it actually sounds like you don't have earplugs in. Right, you can hear the world around you. Your voice sounds right in your head, all of the things that don't usually work with in-ear monitors. Um, the adaptive transparency kind of splits the difference, and the noise canceling isn't quite as good, but you hear it filters out the noises you don't want to hear, like fan noise and car rumble and stuff like that, but you can still hear people around you talking or footsteps or cars so that you don't, you know, if you're if you're out jogging or something, you don't jump into traffic by For accident safety. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I, oh, mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, but, no, but I'm, just, I, also I'm, I'm just about to agree with you. Go, go, you do it, Will. <laughs> no, they're 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 really lovely. Um, you know, if I take a nap, I put them in the in the noise canceling mode and just kind of hook it up to the Apple TV in my bedroom and and put on music or, or some TV show that is is quiet and and works well. Um, and I, the the only time I can't use them really is when I'm sitting in front of my PC, just because they don't work particularly well with Windows. I'm uh, quite fond of mine as well. And I was a real holdout because I didn't used to like the look of AirPods. I was like, eh, you know, they're sticking out of your ear. It's kind of, you know, those sort of white sticks. Um, I thought that they looked silly. Um, and at some point, I just, I don't know, uh, my jobbers bit the dust. Um, and I decided to go AirPods Pro too. Um, and I have had so much fun with these these headphones. I mean, they're... They're nice earbuds. And I know that there are other options. You know, people <laughs> right now are screaming like, no, they're not the only option that you have. And in fact, they're more expensive than certain other options. All true. But these are very nice and they play really well with Apple products. So if you're in the ecosystem, 
it's a it's a very nice gift. Agreed. Uh, and then the last thing that I like to pair, like I don't like the one of the I I've never really liked the way AirPods fit. The same as you, Sarah. Like the the old ones, the stick only ones, kind of fell out of my ear. The in air ones, in ear ones are better, but I don't like the kind of rubber uh, gaskety uh, ear piece that they put on those. Uh, so I bought a pair of like fifteen dollar Comply foam tips for the AirPods Pro. Uh, they snap on and off really easily. Uh, you can get them in a. I think they come in multi size packs if you don't know what size foam tip you use, or you can get a. Uh, you can get just three sets of the of the um, of the same size once you kind of size yourself uh, and they they help with the noise isolation they help them stay in a little bit better they're i find them to be more comfortable um mm. especially if i'm jogging or something like that so yeah it's a, it's a i, I nice added upgrade. these to my wish list right now while you were talking because they just they just look so much better than those silicon ones that they're fine they don't fall out of my ear or anything but these just look so much more comfortable the only complaint i have about them is they only come in black so you so you have, so then you don't look like you're wearing airpods uh, Sarah, it's good. I see on Amazon electric blue, lilac purple, black, and pine green. You can Yeah, you, I mean, if you want to go electric purple, you're totally. But like, that's, but you're, that part is like in, in your ears. That's not really a, you know, they a still feature, show. right? Kind of, I guess. Depends how weird your ears are. I mean, well, as a weird have, ear person, let me tell you, look, sometimes it it can get rather deep. I have a narrow canal, so it's not mm. not really a problem for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean we are it, blessed with narrow canals. Will <laughs> <we>? <laughs> yes, well, not everybody has that blessing, but yes, uh, no. This is this is great for anybody who's interested in AirPods and wants to make them a little bit comfier. Uh, really good. Com the, comply foam ear tips. It's also worth mentioning that Comply makes foam tips for basically every set of in-ear buds you can imagine. Like they have like all the way, whatever you want, the Jabra's, the, the, they will have a, a set of tips for you if you go to their website. So, and they're all about the same price. Fantastic. All right, before we go, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Mike writes in, I've been working in IT for a long time, and I provide tech support for countless family, friends, and friends of friends. I don't think you can underestimate the pressure put on a preteen or a young teen to have an iPhone. I work in an educational institution, and I've seen middle schoolers make fun of kids who don't have iPhones. I've seen kids tell other kids they can't be in their group chat because they don't have an iPhone. It's tough out there for young teens, and the pressure to fit in and not be different is very strong. Mike says, besides the technical aspects, the fashion aspect, like shoes, is hard to overcome. Yeah, I don't doubt that it happens out there. I think what Will Saddleberg was was trying to say the other day was that there are a lot of reasons for this. And 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 maybe it doesn't happen all the time to everybody, but good perspective. Thank you for writing in with that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it used to be the case, I suppose, that, you know, it was that a iPhone was the most expensive, so it was the coolest one. You know, if you liken it to like Jordan shoes, right? Uh, you know, versus Reebok type thing. But at this point, no, that's not really what we're going with. It's more of just like the, I guess the, you know, the the herd mind. It's, I don't know, Will. What are your thoughts? So I have a ten year old. I, I we're we're in the hey, I need to get we need to get my daughter a phone at some point because middle school is coming and schedules get complicated and the watch isn't going to cut it at that point. Um, so. Like, I think it's, I think it's a combination of things. One is that it's, you want to have the thing everybody else has. Two is that you, like, if you're cut off of the iMessage group chat, you're going to be cut off from a lot of your social activities. So, you know, the kids who don't have the iPhones are, are missing those group texts. Maybe that'll be better next year. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, RCS is going to fix this. All you middle schoolers, don't worry. Yeah. In a year from now, uh, we're all going to be in more harmony. Uh, I, I hope I see harmony. middle schoolers with RCS life on their t-shirts next year, just because they're so excited <laughs> about the standard. The, the problem, you know, I'd hate to be the downer, but the problem is they're still going to be green bubbles. Hopefully it won't be as painful to be a green bubble, but that stigma is already there and you know how kids are. So, yeah. I, I think it's much more about just being able to like airdrop pictures to your friends and share your yeah, playlists and all that stuff. Like yeah. that's, that's the, if you don't have Apple music or you don't, don't, everybody has to have the same music thing. My, my daughter has three music services. None of them are paid for, uh, but just so she can get playlists from her friends. So yeah, yeah I mean, it's like when those, I, those cool when kids who went to St. Louis to the tower records that I couldn't get to all the time. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, yeah, your record is still cool, Tom. You just got it at a different place. I just got it at Pomida in downtown Greenville. There you wow. go. 
Did they have uh, the limited one that's signed, or is it just the oh, Chud one? Never. Yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, had to cut that's, out that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tom's from Greenville, of course. Well, Will Smith, we're so happy to have you on the show to bring gift guides and thoughts about uh, you know young teenagers and all of the rest. Let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Yeah, uh, so you can find me at Brad Will made at TechPod at TechPod.content.town. But the thing I want to talk about right now is the Anacrusis, which is coming out of early. It's a game I work on every day. It's uh, We're on Steam. We're on Xbox. We're coming out of early access on December 5th. Uh, we're, we're very excited. We've been working on, we've done 55 updates as of tomorrow since uh, January of 2022 when we launched into early access. Uh, and we built the game with the community. It's a Left 4 Dead alike, we, uh, you know, co-op uh, shooter that works with one to eight players, depending on the mode you're playing. And uh, this summer we added versus mode, so you can play just like you did with Left 4 Dead. You can uh, take control of the special aliens, and you and your friends can take turns being cruel to each other in a kind of form of sanctioned griefing. So I like to think of it as. Uh, so if you like Left 4 Dead, we think you'll like the Anacrusis. Cool. Congratulations, man. I know you've been working on that for a long time, so it's 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 great to see it finally coming to fruition. We, we are we are really excited, and, and I'm really stoked at how the game is. Like it's it's we, like early access is a thing. It's it's early access is complicated. There's right ways and wrong ways to do it. Everybody has different opinions, but I think like we've built this game with the with the community on our Discord and and the folks that play the game early on, and we're excited about the game early on, and I think we've made something special. So. Fantastic. Well, patrons, if you like hearing Will talk about games, stick around. Uh, if you are a member of Daily Tech News Show, you get the extended show, Good Day Internet. And we're going to talk to Will about Valve's revamped Steam Deck, Steam Deck OLED, that's just out finally now. Find out what he thinks. Reminder, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2100 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll be back tomorrow talking about why Toyota decided to put a stick shift in an EV with Tim Stevens, because no one knows better than him. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>